Hey guys, it's Chris with Marsman Gaming, back with another review. I'm here to report that I've been pretty lazy this month and General Marsman wanted me to get off my ass and jump into a genre that I haven't been in in over a decade. That genre being Metroidvania, the action-adventure platforming games that are beloved by so many of the gaming community. I'm sure most of you know the game I'm talking about, it's of course Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. So I went into my wallet, took out my last 50 schmeckles, and purchased it. Now let me highlight that it was 50 instead of the 70 that all other developers are charging. So what a great start, and the greatness didn't stop there. But before we get into the good, the bad, and the galactic grave this game deserves, if you'd like this type of content, please like and subscribe. We here at Marsman Gaming love games, the community, and sharing our experiences with you all. So before the pitchforks, and torches reach the steps of Persia, let's get into it. I'll go over four good things about the game, one great thing, and then the game's weakest link. So let's start with the good, the visuals and music. Now although this is a 2D game, and you're really only running from left to right and going up and down, what your eyeballs experience was nothing short of amazing. Where the fighting and battles take place is colorful and inviting, and even the background shows the artistic mind of the devs at Ubisoft. The music is also very well done. Whether it's the simple music that plays while you're going back and forth traversing an obstacle or puzzle, or the more intense music while you're facing a boss, it keeps you in the game and focus on the task at hand. Now we'll transition to the map and mechanics. These both blend very well together. As I said before, the map is aesthetically pleasing and fairly big for this genre, taking between 20 to 30 hours to complete the main story plus side mission. Yes, you might get a little frustrated by getting lost or confused about how to complete a puzzle, but once you figure it out, all you'll want is more of a challenge. And the mechanics of traversal is very well played. Sargon, who is the protagonist, can slide that breaks into a sprint, dash through midair, double jump, and uses time abilities to make playthrough and fighting very fun and always interesting. The combos that he possesses look outstanding and even feel better. While you hack and slash and button mash your way through it all, it really does have a smooth and crisp feeling. And that leads me right into the best part of the game. I think the best part, the part that outshines everything else, is the action. Each area has its own creatures and soldiers that you have to fight with, and they all have different movesets. Now although there are 7 to 8 main bosses, and some area bosses, they all have very unique attacks and abilities that keep you on your toes the whole time. Controlling Sargon was never boring. Dashing through the air, hitting combos, sliding under or parrying attacks to get your special off was always fun and kept me happy the whole time. And who can forget the time abilities that made puzzling or traversing and attacking such a unique part of the game. To continue with the action, the cutscenes after defeating a main boss were impeccable. It was almost like watching a small anime movie. The choreography of the attacks and scenes kept me smiling the whole time. Of course, the game wasn't perfect. To me, there was something that I consider to be the weakest link, and that was the story. It just really didn't do anything for me. It's a pretty simple story in the beginning. The prince gets taken, and the people you think that are your friends end up not really being your friends. The story got dull near the middle and end, and had me wanting to skip some of the dialogue to get back into the action. The story wasn't the thing that hooked me. It was the action and boss battles that took place. But the story wasn't terrible, and it didn't ruin my experience at all. If the story did have more meaning, it could have turned a great game into an amazing game. So let's talk Galactic Grade. Yeah, the story was a little weak, but everything else was surprisingly awesome, the action being the star of the show. Now it was easy for someone like me who was a little nervous jumping back into this genre. Being able to customize your exact play was a thoughtful gesture from the devs, and being able to go over Sargon's moves in the practice arena helped hone your skills. Also I give the snapshot feature a thumbs up. Without giving away any spoilers, it's a way to take a picture of the specific part of the map to come back to later. There are many items or chests that are out of reach in the beginning that you need to return to. The snapshot feature eases your ability to find your way back once you've unlocked certain moves for Sargon. With amazing action, fun puzzles, and top tier artistic ability on display, Prince of Persia is a must play for any existing fan or newcomer to the genre. All in all, the galactic grade for Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is an 8 
3.6. This game does get a Marsman Gaming stamp of approval. Now please Ubisoft, give us the Sands of Time remake we all deserve. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next gaming review. <laughs>